Hello, and welcome to the third chapter in the 2020 MSTEP Administration Training for Building and District Assessment Coordinators. In this part of the training series, I'm going to go over the important tasks that need to be done when testing is over. So first, I'm going to talk about handling your testing materials after testing. I'll talk about how to manage your secure materials, as well as what to do with non-secure materials. Next, I'm going to discuss how to package your materials to get ready to send back to the scoring contractor. Although I'm going to include this information in this training, remember that you're going to need to rely on the Test Administration Manual, or TAM, when the time comes to get things ready. The directions are very specific, and it's important that you follow each requirement. And then I will discuss the reporting of student test scores. There are reports that are available shortly after the student submits an online test, and there are final reports available later in the summer. I'm going to talk about the preliminary reports that become available within 48 hours of students submitting the test. And then I'll just briefly touch on the final reports. When the final reports become available later this summer, we do a separate training that is specific to those reports. Be sure to look out for that training in late summer. And then I'll discuss what needs to be done in the secure site after testing. There are some very important things that need to be done that will impact your accountability scores and calculations. So it's going to be important that you complete those tasks. We discuss them in this training, but there's also information about each task that needs to be done on the secure site training page at www.michigan.gov slash secure site training. So there are many resources available to you as you work through this. Be sure you know everything that needs to be taken care of so that your accountability information is accurate. In this next section, I will discuss handling test materials. This will include both secure and non-secure materials. There are some secure materials that don't have to be sent back to the scoring contractor, but can't just be left hanging around the school. These are the secure materials that have to be securely destroyed at the school or district. By securely destroyed, that means shredding the materials in such a way that they cannot be seen or put back together by anyone. If you're a school that tested only online, then secure materials for you are going to be limited to the printed test tickets and rosters and any used scratch and graph paper. Paper pencil schools have more secure materials than online testing, of course, but as far as secure materials that need to be destroyed, then we're talking about the used scratch and graph paper, L1 glossaries, that means the first language glossaries used by students learning English. All of the rest of the secure materials in paper pencil testing have to be returned to the scoring contractor. Here's the table from the TAM that's going to be your most helpful guide when it comes time to prepare your materials after testing. It's on page 63, and there's a table for what to do with your secure materials, and a separate table for what to do with materials that aren't secure. So you'll notice that there's a column for what needs to be returned, a column for what schools keep, and what schools destroy. Of course, there's nothing in the schools keep column, because secure materials cannot be kept hanging around the school or district. There are some materials in the non-secure table that I'll show you next that schools can keep. So, things that have to be returned to the scoring contractor are, of course, the used answer documents, the special handling envelope if you have anything in the envelope. If you don't, then you can just destroy the special handling envelope. Don't save it because it won't work for next year. Then you've got, of course, all of the test booklets that were sent to you. Accommodated versions of the test have to be sent back, too. Accommodated versions of the test are things like reader scripts, braille materials, enlarged print, and the audio CDs, or if you have any DVDs, or translated versions of the test. And then the listening CDs and scripts for ELA need to be returned to the scoring contractor. All of those materials are monitored and checked back in at the contractor, so we will be counting to ensure that all of those materials that were delivered are returned. That's a reason why you want to make sure that you inventory your materials when you get them. If you have anything on your packing list that's not included in your shipment, you need to let us know as soon as you get your materials. Don't wait for after testing and then you don't have what's expected to be returned. 
If you have any issues with your inventory, send an email to mde-oeaa at michigan.gov. So next we have the secure materials that need to be destroyed. Test tickets and rosters, L1 glossaries for mathematics, and used scratch and graph paper all need to be securely destroyed after testing. Here's the table for non-secure test materials. It's on the same page in the TAM, page 63. Make sure you're reviewing the TAM as you get your materials ready so that you don't miss anything. Again, you'll notice there's a whole column that's empty here, the return to MSTEP contractor column. Of course, that's because non-secure materials don't need to be returned. Schools can keep test administration manuals, the test administrator's directions and manuals, the OEAA security compliance forms and testing schedules. The security compliance forms and testing schedules have to be stored at the district for three years. The materials that you destroy are any unused answer documents and if you aren't using the special handling envelope. Here are the deadlines to return those secure materials that the scoring contractor is expecting. May 6 for grades 5, 8, and 11, and May 27 for grades 3, 4, 6, and 7. These dates are in the TAM on page 67, and they're included in the important dates documents. This is different from how it's been done in the past. In prior years, there was a date that they were due, then there were dates that there were late returns, but if they were returned late, there was a fine, but they'd still be scored. And then there was a date after which it wouldn't be scored. But as we have fewer and fewer materials being returned, since most schools are testing primarily online, we've moved to just having the one deadline to return materials. So materials need to be returned by the listed dates. There's a diagram in the TAM that shows you how the materials need to be packaged when you're getting them ready to be returned. You'll find this on page 68. The answer documents are packaged by grade and then by content area. So you can see in this image for the grade 5, 8, and 11 window, you'll package all of your grade 5 materials with science on the bottom, then math on top of that, then ELA, and then social studies goes on top. You make these grade level stacks and then pack each grade level group, grade 11 on the bottom, grade 8 on top of 11, and grade 5 on top of that. And then if you have materials in the special handling envelope, that goes on top of that. Remember, with the packaging of these materials, you're going to need to keep referring back to the TAM to make sure it's followed correctly so that when it gets to the scoring contractor, everything is packaged the right way. Here I'm going to discuss reporting. I'm mostly going to focus on the preliminary reports since that's what will be available first. Then the final reports will be available later in the summer. And remember, I do a separate training on the final reports that you will be able to view later in the summer. First, with the Read by Grade 3 legislation being implemented in spring 2020, I want to start by making sure that you know what that is going to look like. Preliminary scale scores will be used to determine the Read by Grade 3 indicator, which will be visible on the Grade 3 ELA preliminary reports. Preliminary scale scores include all of the machine scorable items on the test, which for Grade 3 ELA means all of the items except the passage-based writing prompt. So, on the preliminary reports, students scoring above 1271 will meet the requirements of the law. Students scoring between 1253 and 1271 will have an indicator that means they are eligible for promotion to fourth grade, but will need support to be successful. And students scoring below 1253 will be eligible for retention. As required by the legislation, letters will be sent by CEPI directly to parents of students who fall into the eligible for retention category. Schools are able to view student preliminary scores within 48 hours of the student submitting the test, and usually by the next day. The indicator on the Grade 3 ELA preliminary report will be how schools can monitor which students will be eligible for retention before parents receive the letter from CEPI. Make sure that you are looking at your third grade preliminary ELA scores throughout the test window 
so that you can pre be prepared for questions from parents during testing. The preliminary reports are available 48 hours after the student submits the test. For tests with two parts, like grades 5 and 8 science, the reports are available after both parts of the test are submitted. They remain available until final reports are released. Preliminary reports are accessed through, through the secure site by selecting the reports drop-down and then selecting dynamic score reports. Again, for mathematics, social studies, as well as ELA, the preliminary reports include only machine scored items. They do not include any hand scored items. Science is not included on the preliminary reports. This is because preliminary reports are based on the prior year's proficiency cuts. And since the science test was a field test last year, there are no proficiency cuts from last year. Science will be included on the preliminary reports next year. There will be science results when final reports are released. More detailed information about the preliminary reports and the data in them will be available in the Interpretive Guide to Preliminary Reports, which will be available on the MSTEP webpage at www.michigan.gov slash MSTEP under the Reports section. Watch the spotlight for when that becomes available. This screenshot shows you an example of a social studies preliminary report. The preliminary scale score is plotted as below or above benchmark, which is the proficiency cut or designation. Not proficient, partially proficient, proficient and advanced designations are not available until the final score reports. Subscore data is available on the preliminary report, of course, based on preliminary data. ELA and mathematics will report claim performance indicators, and grade 3 ELA will have the read by grade 3 indicator. For social studies, raw scores, that is, points earned out of points possible, are reported based on machine scored items. Preliminary reports will remain available until final reports are released. Final reports become available in late August. Make sure you watch the spotlight. There will be announcements posted there when the final reports become available. When they are available, make sure you look for my final reports training. There will also be an interpretive guide to MSTEP reports document that provides detailed information about each report. After testing is completed, there are some important tasks that need to be done in the secure site. You'll need to log into the secure site and review the data that is posted and verify that everything is correct. In this section, we will review those tasks. Accountable Students Enrolled in Demographics is the screen in the OEAA secure site where you can look at the list of students who are expected to test for your school or district for your accountability ratings. The demographic information for students is also on this page. You need to go to the Accountable Students Enrolled in Demographics page to verify the names and information are correct. This happens beginning April 27. Make sure you keep an eye on the spotlight. We will post detailed information there when these tasks need to be done. The data on the screen comes from the Michigan Student Data System, or MSDS. Remember, the students listed here will be included in accountability calculations, so it's important that you verify the information. Student demographics will be used in assessment and accountability reporting. While schools can continue to update MSDS through mid-June, OEAA will only use student data with an as-of date on or before May 29th. This means that the data is that is available on May 29th will be the data that is used in the accountability calculations. Make sure it's correct. In order to fix any errors, you need to correct the error in MSDS. Your school or district will have an authorized user for MSDS who can access the system to update the data. Work with whomever this person is to make sure that your information is correct on time. There's a page in the secure site under the assessment registration tab called district and school contacts 
That will show you who your authorized MSDS user is, in case you don't know who that is. Watch the weekly spotlight for availability and deadline information. What should you do with this list of students and demographics? Well, you start by verifying that homeschooled students and non-public school students are not included in the list of enrolled students. You also need to verify that students who are currently enrolled are listed. Make sure to continue to verify the student enrollment through the June deadline, but it's only going to include students who are enrolled in MSDS as of May 29. Verify that students who have exited the school are not listed. And finally, verify student demographic information is correct. If you find errors or information that needs to be updated, you will need to work with your district MSDS authorized user to get those updates in MSDS. If you don't know who your MSDS authorized user is, again, you can find that information on the secure site, on the district and school contacts page, under the assessment registration dropdown. The answer documents received and not tested screen will display the list of students for whom the testing vendors have received either a paper pencil or an online test. This is the only opportunity for schools to review this listing and to report possible issues that may be able to be resolved before assessment and accountability reporting. The list will also display tests that may be invalidated for various reasons. Some of the reasons for invalidation may be appealed or corrected to ensure a student receives a valid score. This will also be the opportunity for schools to submit a reason why a student did not test for review by the Accountability Office for a possible exemption. So what do you do with this list? First, you need to verify that all of the list of paper, pencil, and all online tests that were taken are listed as having been received. This is the window when students not tested issues can be submitted. You need to do this if you have a student who tested at the school, but the list doesn't include the student. If a student is correctly listed as not having been tested, then a student did not test issue, including the reason the student did not test, needs to be submitted. If a student who did not test at the school is listed as having tested at the school, an incorrect tested school issue needs to be submitted. There's an invalid tab that lists students whose tests will be invalidated with a note about why the test will be invalidated. Some reasons for invalidation can be appealed or could be fixed in MSDS to ensure the student receives a valid score. Make sure that you review these so that invalid tests are reported correctly. This is the only opportunity to report any possible issues that could be resolved and to submit a reason why a student did not test for a possible accountability exemption. The answer documents received and not tested windows will come up after testing is over. Again, make sure that you receive the spotlight each week for updates. These are a few links that will be helpful as you go through these ta tasks after testing. First, the Best Practices MSDS Reporting Guide for Trouble-Free Accountability Data is a resource that will help you if you have questions about MSDS reporting. Next is the Secure Site Training page. This page has detailed instructions for each task that needs to be done in the Secure Site. It's a great resource, whether you're brand new to testing and need step-by-step -step instructions, or if you've been doing assessment for a while but just need a refresher for these once a year tasks. And then the link to the MSTEP webpage. A lot of resources are posted here and it's organized into categories to help make it easier to find what you need. And here's our plug to make sure you're getting the spotlight in your email every Thursday. This is where we share important information from OEAA. If you haven't signed up for Spotlight yet, Go to www.michigan.gov slash mde spotlight to sign up. Thanks for joining me for this training series. I hope that it's been helpful. If you have strategies that you're using in your building to help with any of the tasks that I discussed here, send us an email at mde-oeaa at michigan.gov 
We often include suggestions from the field with districts or schools to help make sure everyone has a successful test administration. All of the helpful hints that we included in the TAM this year came from suggestions from the field. So make sure to share what's working for you. It'll help other schools or districts as they navigate through testing tasks. Thanks for watching.